Live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. You may have seen it on our Facebook feeds, our social media feeds. We are very happy to report that the United States Army has voted to reinstate or to allow to continue to serve a Sergeant First Class Green Beret Charles Martland. We sent out our first letter on this case in October of 2015. We outlined in our letter... It was a legal defense letter. The numerous laws prohibiting the sexual abuse of children, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, Afghan law, international law, and international customs and norms. Now, this individual that was uh, Afghani also worked on a U.S. base. He was an Afghanistan police officer. He abused this child. The mother brought the child to the base to be examined. The abuse was confirmed. Over a period of time, Sergeant Martland and his officer that was in command of Sergeant Martler physically removed this afghan police officer who did this laughed about it by the way removed him from the base physically removed him from the base and that's where this quantitative closing down or or narrowing of the military was in his record and charles martland's record the end result was they're getting ready to throw out this decorated war hero we also created a petition in october to charles martland duncan hunter sent a letter uh in J- January, end result. You want to know how many people participated in this, folks? How many people? 342,582 of you signed a petition for Charles Martland. You know how many letters you all sent? 66,845. And Sergeant Charles Martland, Sergeant First Class, stays in the United States Army defending our freedoms, and it was a privilege to defend his. Sergeant Martland's case is done, and that's a victory. But right now, I'm going to tell you that Skip Ash was out on the West Coast just a few weeks ago. And Skip, I know we can't get into details, but let's talk a little bit about it. These cases, we're handling them all the time. So you, Sergeant Martlin got a lot of attention, but we've got another one we're handling for an officer right now. That's correct. It was uh, an Air Force officer, and they, they were threatening to take away his wings because uh, He's a he, pilot. Didn't, yeah. he didn't want to uh, attend some of these events where there was a lot of drinking and Carousing and things like that, and uh, asked for an accommodation was never given to given it, and therefore they put him before a flying evaluation board. Well, that's enough to ruin your career in the Air Force. And we went out and defended him there, and we got a pretty good result. It's being appealed right now under the normal procedure, so we don't want to talk about it yet. But uh, but we so do far that so good. And, yeah, so far so good. So he's happy so far. So Wes, what do you tell a soldier? What would you tell a Charles Martland? who's defending our country with valor and dignity, putting his life in harm's way every single day. He does this act. I'm sure at the time, he was, they let him re-enlist, by the way, afterwards. It was when they had this quantitative downsizing. Right. What do you tell, What do you? because our military guys need hope, and they, gals, men and do. women out there. And at times it's hard to know what to tell them. You can be there for moral support. Uh, the thing I thought about all morning long in light of this, though, is that often the average citizen, the average listener to ACLJ, uh, to Jay Seco Live, they do not realize that they can make a difference. The arm me it's sensitive to the opinions of people right. you might think they're not but the simple volume of the responses from from your listeners has made a difference because the army is concerned about not only the the public's view of them right but also the morale of the, of, of the soldiers and i it's tremendous that that individuals can make a difference if you're just joining us uh west smith of course is our senior military analyst for the aclj a retired colonel skip ash same thing retired colonel senior counsel for the aclj All right, we're getting ready to take a break. Let me just say this. We've been sending out emails and alerts over the last month on the issue of the persecution and the genocide that's going on in the Middle East against Christians. We've been talking about the Middle East a lot on these last few broadcasts. I've sent out an email. One said Christians are being crucified. They're being massacred out of existence. And this is fact. And this genocide has to stop. Now, we finally got the United States to acknowledge that this was genocide. That took a big effort. But now we've got to get international application of these resolutions. And that's where you come in. We've got a petition up at ACLJ.org, and I want you to sign it. Stand with the persecuted church. Stop the genocide. You could sign that at ACLJ.org, or you can call at 1-877-989-2255 to add your name to a petition to stop the genocide and stop it today. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. 
877-989-2255. Back with more in just a moment. Islamic State Jihadists behead, mutilate, and torture Christians. The brutal toll of nearly one million Christians have been slaughtered or displaced. ISIS is engaged in the blatant genocide of Christians in the Middle East. Yet, President Obama refuses to recognize the genocide against Christians. He's pressuring the State Department to deny endangered Christians critical legal protections from ISIS's slaughter. The ACLJ is fighting back, aggressively advocating for vital international legal protections for Christians. We've mobilized our offices on Capitol Hill and across the globe, filing crucial legal documents to protect persecuted Christians from ISIS genocide. Stand up for Christians right now. Sign on to our new petition to recognize the genocide and protect Christians. Call now 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org. In the studio with me is Wes Smith, the colonel, retired the United States Army, a senior military analyst for the ACLJ, in our offices at the campus of Regent University in Virginia Beach. Colonel Skip Ash, United States Army, retired, also senior counsel for the ACLJ in charge of our military law practice, and international law practice. And Logan and I are taking your calls right here in our media center, so let's go right to them and you can get comments as well on Facebook and Periscope. Yep, let's go to Carolyn, who's calling from uh, Illinois on line two. Hey, Carolyn. Hi, Jay and everybody. I'm celebrating with all of you and thanking you for giving us a voice here in America. I am so moved that Sergeant Martland will be uh, exonerated or whatever they call it. He has I am been. just grateful. He is. Let me ask this question technically. So he was, he was up in a review board, so he was not kicked out yet, correct? Yeah, he was still on active duty. He was still on active duty. So, Skip, you're, and you say record will be cleared of, the, of this. So he's in good shape on these records, right, Skip? That's correct. They they have the you know they marked out the bad part in his uh, efficiency report. That happens frequently to people, yep. and therefore when they see that, they'll know something improper had been there, but it had been removed, and they'll right. never see it again. So let me say this also uh, to Carol and all the others that have helped on this. Thank you because you all made a huge difference on this. So let's get some calls and comments, and we are ready to go. All right, let's go on. There are comments coming in. Great news from Martin. That came from uh, Ro- uh, Margaret Roth. I'm so happy. Good to see the impact we can make. Huge decision. Huge. Thank you, Jay, and the ACLJ team. Uh, this, And then, of course, there's all these you know comments, people that just said, you know, this is from Kathleen, just said, God Almighty stepped in where there was injustice. And yep. a lot of great comments. People are just very excited. It's nice to see a day where everyone kind of is positive and together. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and take, take one more call, though, at least for now. Let's go to Eugene, who's calling from Westport, Arkansas. Hi, Eugene. Hi, Jay. Yes, sir. Uh, God bless you for you Thank and your you. team and everything Thank you've been you. doing. Um, as a 31-year uh, period soldier, and I'm still serving in the veterans of foreign wars in my area, Thank you for your uh, I would like to... Th- Thank you all for, for standing up for yep. Sergeant uh, Martlin. Um, you know, General Washington, after two terms of, of uh, as our two terms as our first president, said it is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. And in that farewell address that he gave, he said that you can't claim to be a true patriot without Christianity and biblical morality. Uh, that's a good uh, thing to look up online. The uh, well, here, here address, you got a guy. Here you got a guy that did. I think what anybody would have done. I mean, and, you know, Wes was saying during the break here, I appreciate your call, Eugene, uh, and appreciate your service. This wasn't like he violently attacked this Afghan police officer. He told him to knock it off. The guy laughed at him. And Wes, what did he do? He basically yeah, slammed Yeah, by his own admission, he, he body slammed him uh, each time towards the gate and put him out. out of the gate. There were no permanent injuries, no visible mar- uh, marks on the, on the Af- Afghan police commander. So, you know, Skip, I want everybody to know, we looked this up under international law, Afghan law, international treaties, Uniform Code of Military Justice. I'm holding them in my hand, saw some of the letters and representations of what we sent. I mean, voluminous, to say the least. But this was 
violation of international law what this Afghan police officer was doing. That's exactly right. And what's even more important, it was a violation of Afghan law. He's an Afghan right. national. He was uh, violating his own law, and he was a police officer. So uh, if nobody had stepped in like Sergeant Martland, nothing would have happened to protect that child. So Sergeant Martland is a hero and should be recognized as a hero. Captain Daniel Quinn was the uh, officer that was uh, Sergeant Martland's commander. Uh, let me play for you an interview that he gave last year with Megyn Kelly on Fox News. Captain Quinn, you were there at the time. This guy confessed, and what did you guys do to him? He did confess. Once we heard about the incident, we brought him in. The, uh, the mother and, and her son came to our camp. He chained the boy to his bed for seven to ten days. When the mother tried to intervene and save her son, the Afghan local police commander struck the mother in the face and, uh, and beat her severely as well. So when they came to our camp, they both showed obvious signs of, of abuse and uh, came to us asking for help. They thought that this was going to be right. a reoccurring thing for her son. What a shock. And they took the, the action they took, and that police officer was thrown off the base. We shouldn't be encouraging this by allowing that person then to work on a U.S. military base. But this is, again, international law here. Let's take some more calls. Uh, Irene in Sarasota. Beautiful Sarasota, Florida. You're on the air. Hey. Logan likes Florida. I, Go ahead, Irene. First of all, I say thank God because I think yep. we're forgetting him in this in our country and the world. Yep. But thank you. Thank all our service people, all of you. Thank God you are led by God. And um, we're you know, we're thankful. Absolutely. Um, you answer a lot of the questions that I said, what happened to the man? What, what are we going to change so this doesn't happen anymore? Okay, so you ask a great question. What do we change from this? So so let me go to Wes and skip on this. So uh, Irene asked a great question. What changes here? Because you still have the quantitative downsizing. Mm -hmm. But is it the fact that a spotlight can be put on these things and you can basically, I think what you said earlier, Wes, is that public opinion can move the military. Absolutely, it can. And part of what the military is doing in response to this, uh, according to some friends that are that, that know, is they are going to talk to soldiers about how to respond when this happens. Because in the Pashtun culture, this is not an exception. Yeah, this behavior is routine. And so they're going to try and put the soldiers you know, more in their comfort zone so they know that they don't have to look the other way, but what's the appropriate response? Yeah. Now, when you said something there, I know we've talked about it before, that this is a cultural problem. That cultural problem, though, Skip, does not mean it's legal. Well, that's exactly right. It's against Afghan law. It's against international law that, that Afghanistan has agreed to abide by. And it's against our law to require anybody to look the other way for something like this. So I, you know, I think uh, we need to keep that in mind when we put our soldiers in a situation where they're confronted with something like this, which is a clear moral issue that they have, uh, they have to be able to act to do the right thing. And that's exactly what uh, Sergeant Martland did. Yeah, we had some comments that came in. This came from Tony. She said, I can't believe there was even any question yep. that this Green Beret was anything but a hero. And that's from Ruth. I'm so happy. It's good to know the huge impact we're making. Great news from Martlin. Uh, he's done what he did what had to be done. And lots of comments still coming in. Guys, if you're monitoring Facebook, please give me some more comments. I'd love to hear what people are saying. All right, should we take this last call? Let's take this one. It'll be set up. And then the listen, week. then we got six open lines. We'll take this call. We're so doing you, this on purpose. Yep. So you call in right after this. Kevin, Massachusetts, you're on the air. Hi, Kevin. Hi, good afternoon. Hey. Uh, thank you, guys. Sure. And really happy about the victory today and everything else. Yep. Um, you know, this is a really big deal, considering I don't understand, or I don't, I don't know if I can grasp it, the, impl the great implications of what's going to happen when we have 250 soldiers that are going to go in to support rebels. You know, half the time they don't know who the rebels are, that they are actually linked with ISIS or or yeah. anybody else. And then, and then, you know, what are the implications? You know, we got Syria who he's, he's the official, they, the Syrian government is under Assad is the official or the unofficial enemy. And, no, they're the you know, official enemy. The problem is, the, the, he's the official enemy. The problem is, the people who would be the next government, who knows if it's worse? I mean, this is the problem. Now, Wes has written a, a great article that's up at ACLJ.org. But Kevin, yes, hang on the line here, Kevin, because I'm going to follow up with a question to you in a moment. But Wes, let's talk about this. The situation in Syria, the 250 special forces, Give us kind of the thumbnail view of what you've written in that piece that's at ACLJ.org right now. Right. Well, part of the issue is uh, we're sending these special operators into Syria, and yet the White House is adamant that they are not combat troops. They're not in a combat role, right. and yet they are in a combat zone. Uh, all of the soldiers in Iraq and Syria right now are given hazardous duty pay, and in the Army, when you go to combat, you get a right shoulder patch. They all get patches for being there, and yet the White House contends, no, it's not combat. And it's just very confusing uh, to the American people and to the soldiers. So, Skip, from a, from a, the standpoint of what's happening in Syria right now, and by the way, we've got a brand new book coming out in the fall called Unholy Alliance. It talks about Syria, Russia, and Iran. 
you got it. You got it. That's running Syria is terrible, but you don't know who these rebels are. I mean, what what do you do here if you were the president of the United States? Well, I think what we need to do is we need to focus on which uh, fight we're going to engage in. And ISIS is the most dangerous to us right now. They're the ones who are trying right. to destabilize the region and destabilize the rest of the world. We need to focus on them. the The issue between about the government of Syria. I mean, I. I, I sort of take the Israelis' view, and that is better the devil you know than the devil you don't, especially when he's going to be weakened. But uh, I think right now the president needs to tell the American people what our troops are going to be doing over there and against whom they are going to be fighting. So let me ask this question also, Wes, because this is in your article. And by the way, it's called Words Matter and So Do Boots. This is up by uh, at ACLJ.org uh, by uh, Colonel Wes Smith, who's a senior military analyst for the ACLJ. You wrote in there, notwithstanding the evidence, the administration offers a consistent claim that it will not send any American troops to serve on the ground in Iraq or Syria. What does that tell ISIS? What does that tell the, uh, these our rebel allies, if there are such? Mm -hmm. What does it communicate to them? Well, it communicates to them that there is a lot they can get away with, for sure. Uh, they realize that, uh, that the American soldiers on the ground are in a bind. And uh, and so they take advantage of that. Plus, you know, our enemies today, they are politically astute and they are yep. media savvy. Astute. Absolutely. Especially and so they use all of this to play mind games as well as to attack U.S. soldiers. We're getting ready for a break, but I want to encourage you to take some action, folks. I mentioned uh, on previous broadcasts that Christians are being crucified, sold into slavery by ISIS. This is happening immediately. The Islamic State is abducting Christians and especially women. They'll kill the men. But the women and children, especially females, they're selling into slavery. We successfully pressured the Obama administration. They didn't want to do it to label this as genocide against Christians. Now it is our time for action. Solemn duty to act is what I said in an email. We need your help. We have a petition up. It's an obligation to act. We've got to enforce these resolutions. That's going to take work at the United Nations. And we're uniquely positioned to do that at the ACLJ because our European affiliate, is a non-governmental organization, an NGO with special consultative status at the UN. If you want to help us, we encourage you to do it. Sign that petition now to stop the genocide at aclj.org or call us at 1-877-989-2255. That's aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255. Islamic State jihadists behead, mutilate, and torture Christians. The brutal toll of nearly one million Christians have been slaughtered or displaced. ISIS is engaged in the blatant genocide of Christians in the Middle East. Yet, President Obama refuses to recognize the genocide against Christians. He's pressuring the State Department to deny endangered Christians critical legal protections from ISIS's slaughter. The ACLJ is fighting back, aggressively advocating for vital international legal protections for Christians. We've mobilized our offices on Capitol Hill and across the globe, filing crucial legal documents to protect persecuted Christians from ISIS genocide. Stand up for Christians right now. Sign on to our new petition to recognize the genocide and protect Christians. Call now 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org. Great way to get into the weekend, and that is a win for Sergeant Charles Martlin, that decorated Sergeant First Class, Green Beret, who's going to be thrown out of the Army. Not now. That's because 400,000 of you made a statement. Our team did a great job here. I want to thank all of our team who did a great job, everybody from, from uh, Wes and Skip and our production teams and our staffs, uh, but also to, of course, Duncan Hunter's office, but mostly to you all. I mean, 400,000 of you contacted us. This is an incredible number of people. Uh, we started working on the case in October. The case is now resolved at the end of April. In in our world, that's pretty quick. Uh, and, Wes, I take it in the military, that's probably pretty quick, too. Very quick. Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. Very quick. So that was a good, quick result. All right, Logan, Let's we got a lot of people calling in, and let's get right to those calls. Patricia in Marietta, Georgia, you're on the air. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Hey. I, thanks, thanks to ACLJ and all of the senators and everyone that worked on um, Sergeant Martland. Yep. I just have one overarching question yep. about the whole thing. Sure. How did this ever even get out of the Army? Why didn't they take care of it? 
Well, there was. I'm going to let Wes and Skip give you the technical reasons, but let me give you the, the 60,000 flyover. There was a quantitative downsizing in the military, and he got caught in a bureaucratic red tape uh, because of this. Inc- there was an incident report, and that's what triggered what became a six month fight. Wes? Well, one of the things that Skip and I talked about a while back is that you know the, the local commander for the special forces had several options. Uh, he, he ended up sending it up the chain, and he got a general letter of reprimand. But as Skip had told me, he could have done a local letter of reprimand and kept it in his local file, and it never really would have gotten out of the, the unit. Is that correct, Skip? That's correct. I mean, that's the way he should have done it. So and, it was part uh, of it was process, right, Skip? The process correct. started and, off wrong. Right. And once he got that bad mark and you begin to downsize— Mm -hmm. Uh, There are so many good people in the Army that they're looking for anybody with a mark against his record. And you have these drones down there just looking through records for bad marks. And they're not they don't know who these people are. They don't know Mm -hmm. what they've done. So at the lowest level, I can understand why they identified his file. It never should have been in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, once it goes up, when you get to the decision makers, that's where we had to intervene and the congressman and everybody else. And that's where we got the success. The good that comes out of this, though, is that it put a spotlight on what's going on in the military, too. Because Martland is a hero, folks, and uh, decorated war hero and a Green Beret. So good news there. All right. Rapid fire, Logan. All right. Let's continue on. Let's go to David in Toledo, Ohio. Hi, David. Hello there. Yes, sir. You're on the air. Go ahead. uh, I love your band. Thanks. Thanks so much for your work on this thing. Great. And my question very quickly is, from a legal point of view, with the antagonism toward biblically-based people in the military, is there anything that can be done to kind of slow down this tendency? So what we're having to do is engage these issues regularly. Now, you know, Wes was a chaplain, and the chaplain's corps has been getting beaten up by some of these groups that are... Are going after him, so we're we're fighting back hard. Uh, we got to use legal means. We got to use political means. We've got to use mass communications. But uh, there's something that's what's working on right now. I'm not going to go into the. Don't want to let it out of the bag. But there's something coming within one of the within the chaplain's corps that if it per, turned out to be true, it would turn your head. I mean, but I guess Wes. At the end of the day, though, this goes back to public statements on this make a difference. I mean, we saw that here, 450,000 people basically responded. It had a huge impact. Absolutely it did. Uh, the military is one of the largest bureaucracies in the world, yep. but they the letters that come in, uh, yeah. they, they account for those letters, and, and many of them are read, and, and they react to that. They react to public opinion. Skip, also let me ask you this. Uh, we, we did a pretty aggressive campaign here over a course. I'm looking at it. We had documentation going on in October. Again, uh, 1st of October, we created a petition the end of October, January, January 27th and 29th letters went out, February 2nd documents went out, February 5th, February of 20, uh, 2016, 93 lawmakers uh, get notified. We sent another series of letters February 9th all the way up, I mean, all the way up until four days ago. So it does make a difference when people speak out. It does. And and we're keeping our eye on the ball here. We don't only just do it for the people like Sergeant Bartland. We yep. just sent out a letter today to the Marine Corps because Mikey Weinstein and the Military Religious Freedom Foundation is trying to stop yep. a, uh, a prayer breakfast. So we are intervening and supporting the commander in, at Quantico. Yeah, so we so, are we're keeping our eye on the ball, and we are intervening every place we have to. So, folks, again, not just talking about it, not just broadcasting about it, we're actually doing it. We are defending freedom here, and that's what we do with our lawyers, our government affairs teams, our special advisors. Let's get another call. We're going to right. get four in four minutes. Yeah, we can do it. Let's go to Mike in Salina, Kansas. Mike, yes, you there? Sir. Hey, Mike. Yep, yes, you're sir. There. I first want to applaud you for all you do. I, myself, am a retired veteran. Retired last year, and the last three years of my retirement was nothing but a fight through the bureaucracy. Yep. And I uh, thank God that uh, I totally depended on him, but I exhausted all of my resources. Yeah. Um, and 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 at the at the lowest level of command, and, and the American people will never fathom, but my wife uh, has seen it at its worst, and I just, I just thank God for people well, like you to. to I want you to know, Mike, talk. that we are standing for the military. We're committed to that at the ACLJ. We have a special unit at the ACLJ that deals with this, as as we just said. We were working on Sergeant Martin's case. Skip was out doing a hearing on another case. I mean, it just, you know, this case is over now. That's good news. You know what I say? Next case. I promise you, there will be a next case. That's just the way this works. Let's get another call, Logan. Yep. Let's move on. Let's go to Mike in Troy, Ohio. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Hi. Um, I want to thank you guys for all the work sure. you're doing um, and uh, enjoy watching your show on Facebook Great. every day. Thanks. Um, 
but uh, I do have a uh, question. Go ahead. Um, the uh, military is famous for uh, being very bad losers. Yeah. And uh, what are they going to do with Sergeant Martland okay. now that he's been exonerated? All right. Good. Good. Great question. We we touched on it earlier. So Wes, what happens here now? Well, his record is, is uh, the the bad part has been taken out of his official record, so it cannot follow him. When promotion boards meet, they look strictly at the paperwork, at right. the records themselves. So, Skip, he's actually in good shape, plus the public profile on it. Absolutely, and remember that people in his community came forward to defend him, so right, he has a military. great reputation, so he's going to get uh, continually get uh, good ratings. All right, let's grab that last call. Alex in Texas. Hey, Alex, you're yeah, on. Wrap it up. Hey. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for several years. I've given to your campaigns. Great. I've written in Appreciate and it. done your uh, petitions. No, your writing stuff. Yes, yeah, the petitions and all that. If um, if they send some special forces into the Middle East, the ISIS doesn't need to know what they're there for. I think right. that God broadcasting is causing- are the Israelis keep asking this question: Why does the United States? broadcast this why do we broadcast what we're doing with our troop movements that's going to do it for the broadcast today folks i've been talking about this petition on genocide you know a lot of you signed our first petition which had a good result and that was the administration finally acknowledged and stated that christians were in fact being subject to genocide by isis and others in that region in the middle east but now it's time to take it to the next level and that is the international bodies and to seek enforcement of international protocols to protect the persecuted church. We need to mobilize tens of thousands of you from around the globe. Sign this petition today. Stop the genocide. ACLJ.org, that's ACLJ.org, or 1-877-989-2255. We don't have a moment to lose. Take action now. ACLJ.org to sign that petition to stop the genocide, or 1-877-989-2255. Islamic State Jihadists behead, mutilate, and torture Christians. The brutal toll of nearly one million Christians have been slaughtered or displaced. ISIS is engaged in the blatant genocide of Christians in the Middle East. Yet, President Obama refuses to recognize the genocide against Christians. He's pressuring the State Department to deny endangered Christians critical legal protections from ISIS's slaughter. The ACLJ is fighting back, aggressively advocating for vital international legal protections for Christians. We've mobilized our offices on Capitol Hill and across the globe, filing crucial legal documents to protect persecuted Christians from ISIS genocide. Stand up for Christians right now. Sign on to our new petition to recognize the genocide and protect Christians. Call now 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org.